What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be playing around with something a little bit different, actually. Something kind of outside the ordinary of what I do here on the internet. We're going to be doing like a Mod Watch episode because for a long time, I have been waiting for the creation of a sandbox shadow run game. You know, like all the fun stuff that Battletech had? I want all that stuff inside the world of Shadowrun, and I've actually got a mod here that was recommended to me by my community for Shadowrun Dra Dragonfall, if I can actually get the words out of my mouth, that will allow you to do all of those things that I wanted to do. Right at the front end here, I'm going to tell you, it's buggy, it's wonky, it's underbaked, it's underproved, it has all kinds of little issues. But at the end of the day, it's effectively the sandbox experience that I always wanted out of a Shadowrun game. So we're going to dive on in here today for about 30 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list, or if it looks like it's just not for you. If after watching this, I will have all the requisite links down below. My reason in featuring this is kind of in the hopes that the developer will actually get some extra hands on board, because my audience extends out pretty far at this point. There's a lot of you out there, and a lot of you have coding experience, a lot of you have graphic experience a lot of you guys have scripting experience and modding experiences and things of that nature and as it sits right now this is kind of where I'm hanging all my hopes so all those links are down there you can also find links to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live uh, but let's dive on into this thing so what is happening right now on screen right now on screen I am responsible for infiltrating a bottling plant and they've got a number of files around that I need to get my hands on uh, in order to sabotage, do some kind of corporate sabotage. They haven't really said exactly what it's being used for. And anybody that runs the shadows knows you don't ask questions in those situations like ever, if you can help it. What they want to use it for, that's up to them. If you don't know what a shadow runner is, effectively, this is like Cyberpunk 2077. It is a game that takes place in a dystopian future that sort of imagines like what would the world be like if Tolkien's races all made it to like the year 2052. And at the end of the day, they were all doing like mercenary street runs against each other with corporate hegemony and companies ruling and running everything. That's exactly what this game is right here. And so in this universe, you'll find dwarves, you'll find elves, you'll find orcs all heavily armed with AK-47s and things of that nature, running corporate sabotage and generally doing mayhem and villainy in order to make money because corpos are the bad guys. There's magic, there's wizards, there's shamans, there's spirits, there's all kinds of things. Dragons going on in this game. Uh, I tripped the alarm on accident while trying to electronics the door open, so I'm just going to break the panel real fast with my gun. And then we'll open this bad boy on up is the file that I'm looking for inside of here. It looks like it actively is. All right, so we've got the stolen goods. Let's get on up and out of here. Uh, but unfortunately, I get the feeling the enemy is probably not going to take too kindly to the fact that I've broken into their installation. So they're probably going to hit us with another wave or two of interference. Let's get everybody moving and moving on out. But this is a sandbox experience. So one of my big complaints about Shadowrun Dragonfall and Shadowrun Hong Kong, despite the fact that actually I think the games are really exceptional, I think they're really great RPGs, is that Hairbrain Schemes didn't really apply any of the stuff that they did with Battletech to Shadowrun, which really sucks because all of the things that I wanted out of Shadowrun were incorporated into the Battletech games, namely like kind of endless sandbox gameplay where you can pick and choose your jobs as much as you want to. You can play at your own pace and then you can tackle storyline missions around the time that it becomes comfortable for you. Uh, this is essentially that. Shadowrun Unlimited gives you kind of like a hub of Seattle. You can take jobs from various fixers. You can equip your character as you want to equip your character as you go through the game. And then you can tackle storyline jobs as you desire to do so. And so right now I'm trying to get my money up. My character is like painfully street level right now. If you don't know what street level means, Chummer, it means that you're not Nova Hot, all right? It means that you're kind of like remedial when it comes to shadow running. You're kind of like a corner boy. Uh, you can run some packages. You can get into a fight. But if you tangle with anybody that actively means business you're probably hosed and so i'm trying to get my reputation up right now i'm trying to make inroads with all the proper people i'm trying to make sure i've got a nice credit stash coming on in and i'm upgrading my character and my skills and my gear we've got the bottling plant all taken care of it looks like we've recovered the files that we were actively going for so i need to get up on the horn and call my mr johnson right now if you don't know what a mr johnson is a mr johnson is effectively a seedy guy that arranges jobs a fixer a, a guy that has his ear to the road 
road listening for people with problems that are willing to pay to have those problems taken care of whether it be murder or whether it be theft or whether it be hacking or whether it be espionage or anything else like that uh, that guy arranges the jobs and disperses your payment when you complete it i need to call my fixer real fast which as of right now is frosty uh, this game is set in Seattle. It's got a lot of the characters that you have come to love and know from the sh the Shadow Run on Sega Genesis, uh, which is one of my favorite video games of all time, like hands down. Oh yeah, I needed to deliver the file to a guy. That's what it was. I needed to drop this file off with a guy in the Redmond Barrens. Uh, this is an open world game. You can transition in between maps. Load times are considerable in a lot of the cases. Uh, if load times are one of those things that annoy you to tears, this will most assuredly annoy you as well. It is a mod made by one guy over the last decade. In every sense of the word, you're gonna run into balance issues, you're gonna run into bugs, you're gonna run into problems you're gonna run into all kinds of things but for me I've been playing it pretty much all day yesterday and I started off playing it this morning instead of doing my work and so that seems like a really good sign to me who do I have to drop this off with do I have to drop it off it looks like some guy just like on the street over here hopefully I don't get jumped on my way over there there's kind of like these random little events that'll happen on the street which are very much inspired by the Sega Genesis game that you'll have to resolve every now and again if your heat or your notoriety oh that doesn't look good that's probably not advantageous do you have the package yeah it's right here thank you unfortunately I'm not in the business of leaving witnesses oh man this is not ideal I'm gonna pull back behind this trash can because it doesn't matter if everybody else dies it only matters if I die uh, go ahead and hit him with a little bit of the dock a dock and then put your drone in control mode real fast because I think the drone is probably the only way that we're getting out of this. Uh, this drone is the scariest beast to ever live in the history of the world. The rest of my party, not altogether that impressive. But this drone right here, this drone will get it done. Bust a couple shots at this guy with my big old 357 Magnum. Mag dump that dude right there. Do I still get paid if I killed the job giver? If I was playing tabletop right now, I would absolutely crack the package open and see what I found. That's just me personally. Move up into cover right there. There we go. Get him with a little bit of damage. And down goes the enemy. Well, that sucks. We got stabbed in the back, although this isn't altogether uncommon for Shadowrunners. You've decided to make a career choice that effectively solidifies you and cements you as a deniable asset. When stuff like that happens... I mean, it's par for the course. These things tend to happen in the world of shadow running, which is why you should really sort of cover your back. But inside the confines of non-tabletop gameplay, you can't really think outside the box. These things just sort of happen. In the tabletop game, you can sort of like have your decker look around and kind of see who contracted the job and hack some files and figure out who they are and if they're trustworthy, find their identity, find where their kids go to school, stuff like that so that you have leverage. Uh, in a video game, it's all par for the course. These kind of things happen so that you can't really undermine whoever it is that's coming after you. Hopefully, I still get paid for this job. All right, Frosty, job's done. Uh, we still got paid $17.50. I got to pay my mercenary. Uh, this game functions very much like the Sega Genesis game does. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Take a shot every single time I say Sega Genesis. And I promise it's going to uh, get you absolutely wasted. But that having been said, it is very clear that the developer of this mod is a big fan of that game. I am too. I think it's one of the greatest video games ever made that is completely and totally an unsung hero of open world gaming. What they managed to accomplish with the Sega Genesis Shadowrun in terms of like open world procedural content on a Sega Genesis cart is utterly incredible. And nobody ever talks about that game. Nobody ever talks about it. The game was like 20 years ahead of the curve and nobody ever talks about it. It's the strangest thing. One of those little pieces of video gaming history. Since I got wounded during the last run, we're going to have to go to our safe house and we are going to have to chillax for a little bit. This game focuses on realism in a lot of ways. Your character has notoriety. Your character has heat. As you do jobs and as alarms go off and as you murder people, you have more of an established figure in the shadows. And so I need to get some health back anyways. So I'm just going to go to my apartment. I need to see how much health I have though. 25 out of 30 all right we can rest for one day this is going to lower my heat 
and then it's also going to give me a little chunk of my HP back so that we can get back out on the streets and see what other jobs are on offer. There are other... I haven't even fully plumbed the depths of this. I've been playing this mod for about seven or eight hours now, and I haven't even figured out the breadth of what you can actually do. I've seen, like, these little references and skill checks and whatnot as I'm going through the game that seem to imply that there's other emergent content out there, but the world is pretty chunky, and I haven't had a chance to walk into every building, talk to every single person that's interactable, find every storyline, find every narrative thread just yet. But I'm trying to get there. Uh, but as of right now, we need to R&R &R for a minute. Can I call my fixer from here? All right, let's call the fixer. Frosty, what you got for me? You got any jobs? Let's see what we got here. Couple contracts open. I have a job involving corporate espionage. It's a simple run. Break into Telestrian, steal some documents, deliver them to the client. The job pays twenty five hundred. Am I gonna get backstabbed again? There's not a there's not a lot of variety in the missions, but there are some interesting things that I've seen along the way that I actually want to explore further. Like there was this repeating mission where I could deliver packages, for example. It didn't pay hardly anything, and yet as I got to like the fourth or the fifth package that I delivered around, the quest giver started to open up and like introduce himself and, and start of like explain who he was. And I'm sort of wondering if that's leading towards like a bigger heist or something like that, because if that's the case, that has me very, very incredibly excited. So we gotta go to Telestrian. I'm probably gonna need some backup for this job. I should also probably poke around in the Matrix first, uh, which is effectively the internet in the world of Shadowrun. It's full dive internet where your whole consciousness goes into the internet and you can look like what you want. And you can sound like what you want. And you can do what you want. I should probably dig around in the Matrix first and see how hard in this place is. Uh, but first, let me apply some of my karma over here. Oh, it's not going to let me apply karma while I've got a dialogue box open. All right, so I've got 11,000 new yen. I need to get to, I think, 25,000 in order to buy my next cyber deck, which will increase my attack power. It'll increase my system storage. Uh, this game also incorporates a lot of tabletop aspects. If you go, hold on, let me click on my character real fast. If you get on your comm link, uh, it's got a bunch of other stuff going on too, where you've got non-combat skills like negotiation, electronics, stealth, all that kind of stuff that are available for you to peruse. I've been putting stuff into electronics because I want to learn to hack maglocks because decking is the worst part of this mod. I, I try to avoid decking as much as humanly possible. I came in as a decker and I regret it. I should have come in as a samurai or whatever, but like that's no admonishment of the mod itself. Uh, decking is the worst part of Shadowrun in general. It was the worst part of Shadowrun, Dragonfall, it was the worst part of Hong Kong, it's the worst part of the tabletop. There's a reason why the running joke is that when the Decker takes his turn, the rest of us go to the bar for a couple of drinks. And it's because decking is sort of like this slow, obnoxious experience, and that sort of permeates every aspect of Shadowrun, including this mod. So it's not really the mod's fault. It's more of a flaw that exists inside of Shadowrun itself. But let's see if Telestrian has anything that I can fool around with here before the infiltration. Okay, so we've got a system access node over here. I'm going to try to spoof the access protocols because I have somewhat okay spoofing skills. The game doesn't show you any of the dice rolls that you're making. It says you rolled a zero, but that's not a thing in Shadowrun. And so it's making some kind of dice roll, but just like your character... Uh, has various things like lock picking and electronics and stuff like that that you can upgrade. Your character's cyber deck also has various programs like masking and spoofing and exploiting uh, that you can also upgrade along the way. All of mine are maxed out right now uh, for my current cyber deck. There's not really much else that I can do there. Spoof the access protocols over here. Try to grab some pay data on my way through town. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we succeeded. There we go. We got the pay data. I can only hold one pay data for right now because my cyber deck sucks. I'm effectively hacking on like an e-machine right now. It is what it is. When you see the lights go out like that, it's due to the way that the game is arranged. Uh, so 
this used to happen with Dragonfall as well. Uh, basically, the Decker and his turn are taking place at like the speed of light or the speed of data transfer. This is kind of what makes decking really tedious in Shadowrun, is that the Decker gets like six turns to everybody else's one turn in meat space. And so that's where the running joke comes from, that when the Decker takes his turn, we all go get pizza. I don't know exactly where I'm going right now, but I'm going somewhere. Central processor access. I don't know if this is a good idea. Uh, we failed to spoof, unfortunately, the CPU. Is this a barrier ice? No, this is a trace program. We're about to get booted. Well, unfortunately, that was black ice and it killed me. And so I don't think since they're using black ice out here, there's different types of ice, which is counter intrusion measures effectively inside the Internet, like firewalls and stuff like that. And effectively, there's white ice, which can boot you off the network, but it can't really hurt you. Uh, the worst that's going to happen is that you get ejected from the Matrix and you get knocked out. Uh, there's also black ice, which effectively attacks you directly as a human being. Um, and that's where things get kind of murky and you can actually get murdered by your internet. And so they have black ice inside of there, which means that that's a very, very dangerous subsystem that we probably should not be fooling around with. I need to go to the north side and steal some documents. I think we're probably going to want to have some backup for this one. I don't know how crazy it's going to get, but let me call some of the homies real fast. Uh, I'm going to get Verum. And we'll hire him. So he's a street samurai. I'll probably call Ricky as well. Yeah. Let's get Ricky in here with us. And then we need to go to the north side. That's a bit of a walk. So I'm just going to call a taxi real quick. So there's our taxi. Unfortunately, he's like way down the street. I guess he didn't see me. Uh, let's go to the north side real fast and we'll see what sort of mayhem we can get involved in here. I need to increase my decking skills kind of badly too. I honestly don't know if Ricky is any good. I've never hired him. So like, I guess we're about to find out. I know Viram Julius is dope. Like he's actually pretty rad in combat. I need to cruise around town and find some other shadow runners too to diversify the portfolio of like my Rolodex of who I can call on to help me out with some of this stuff. But I haven't quite gotten around to it yet. Uh, this is where we're trying to go. Telestrian R&D. Let's save before we go in. We don't have the skills to do anything other than a smash and grab because I'm still pretty early on in the game. So I can basically guarantee you that this is going to turn into mayhem very, very quickly. I would like to look at my karma. Yeah, let's go in on my range combat because I feel like we're going to be fighting in here. We'll go with a little more quickness too. And then it only leaves me with one karma left to fool around with. I don't think there's anything that I really want to throw in there except that I've been really disappointed with pistols on this run. So I might swap into rifles. I keep clicking confirm instead of double kick clicking on the skill. There we go. All right, we'll get a skill and rifle real fast because we just have like that one hangover karma which is the XP you get for doing missions. Uh, let's take everybody in here. I doubt that I have the electronic skill. What does he do? So he's got aim boost. He's got like a mana bolt. He's got a raccoon totem. And he's got heal wound. Okay, that'll probably be helpful. We don't get shot that much. I say tentatively. Panel. Okay, electronics are not where they needed to be, so I can't get into the door just yet. Uh, we do have bad guys coming on in, though. Let's unload on them. There we go. We dropped them. Damn, dude, we're not even through the front door yet. All right, door's broken. In we go. I don't know exactly where this data file is, but we got to find it before too long. So let's get hustling. We're going to keep everybody in cover. We're going to move fast and hopefully this works out. Get up in there. Uh, since the alarm already went off, 
it doesn't really matter, does it? We kind of are where we are. I don't think this is like a reactor room because I've I've infiltrated this place before. So I don't feel like the file is going to be in there. So instead, let's push this way through the server racks and through like the cryo storage. And we'll see if this works out for us. I prefer to avoid leaving as many stacked up bodies as possible. All right. Break that guy right there. I think I'm going to dedicate a lot of my karma to electronic skills so I can get through these doors. Oh, it actually looks like it all leads inside of here. Okay, Julius, you get in there. I don't see anything interactable yet, but there is a door over there. I've never gone that deep into the facility, so I guess we'll find out. Ricky, you and me, get on the door over here. Ah, they're shooting at Ricky. Ricky, no! Eh, let's just start on this guy. He's already flonked, so, like, whatever. Ricky, I don't know if you want to, like, mana bolt this guy. And then maybe pull back behind the wall. But that would probably be the smartest play for you right now. It's a little hot and spicy out. Ow, dude. Oh, three damage is not good. Three damage is sub-ideal. Ricky, get over here and heal me. Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate you, baby. He has half cover? How does he have half cover? Just keep firing. It's whatever. Uh, that's on two-turn cooldown. All right. Another guard bites the dust. Let's keep moving towards this back office area and see if we can extract the thingy. I gotta wait a couple turns till like Ricky gets his shit together anyways and can heal me again. Put Julius right there. I'm guessing this back office area is where we're gonna find the safe. Ricky's got one more turn. I need to reload. Let's get in behind cover over here. Throw a heal on me, please. Honestly, I feel like Ricky's carrying his weight. I have some pretty serious, like, GSR going on, dude. And, like, he's managed to buff it all out so far. This guy should go down fast. He doesn't have very good armor. Ricky, get in there. See if you can mana bolt this nerd. Yeah good mana bolt unfortunately mana bolt is usually for guys that have like tons of cyberware and low willpower uh, so he didn't go down or take very much damage but i finished him off with the old deagle so let's move over here let's smash this bad boy open we gotta get out of here after this is over dude it's gonna be a haul is it inside of here just get everybody into the office real fast. It's probably that wall safe right there would be my guess. It seems like they like to put things in a wall safe as far from the entrance as possible. What? You have electronic skills since when? Hold up. Virum has electronic skill? There's no way to test. There's no way to check that because he doesn't have a character sheet, dude. Like, so the, the supplementary stuff that's inside the game, like electronics and deceit and, like, all of those things you can use mid-run, you can only, like, see them for your character as far as I can tell. Is this our guy over here? Actually, it doesn't look like there's anything interactable over here. Send Virum over this way and see if we can find it. Oh, what's up? You're a guard. How you doing, guard? Can't hit him from there. I mean, I guess put down Raccoon Totem. That sounds sort of acceptable to me. This guard actually isn't even aware of us. Ooh. Nasty hit right there. There we go. 
Get him lit up nice and spicy. Well, now that I know that Virum Julius can get through electronic doors, that's a huge piece of information, dude. That's incredibly helpful. I wish I had known that up front. All right, we're moving now. We're schmoving. Still don't see anything interactable, but maybe. Hmm. This room's got a couple of guards inside of it. Ow, Ricky, no! Damn, Ricky just got slapped. Ricky just had a terrible day. Sorry, Ricardo. That's a tough one for you, brother. When you get one tapped like that, I don't know what to do for you. Nobody has med kits or anything. Unfortunately, that kind of cuts off our line on healing, too. Yeah, drop him real quick. I wonder what happens when Ricky dies. I don't think I've ever lost a Shadow Runner thus far. Can't be good. I'm gonna get that door lock open for me. Oh, maybe it's like a randomized roll. Who even knows? Break that open. Oh, there's so many guards. Everything is terrible. Oh, are they coming from behind too? These are all problematic situations. Peek that other guard. Is he in here? All right, let's get into the next room. It's got to, like, be in here, I think. Yeah, it's got to be on that computer. Okay, get everybody inside the room real fast. We still got to evac after this, too, which is probably going to get messy. All right, there's the info. I could have just come in this way. I didn't know where the information was, so I was spending a lot of time looking around. Uh, dive into cover. Veer him. I'm going to need some backup over here, dude. There we go. Drop him. Ah! No shooty splatty. All right. Everybody lock and load because we don't know what's coming next. Well, at least since we hacked the door, I know I'm getting close with my dice roll. It's all hidden from the player. I wish that it wasn't. Like, I wish that it told you on the door what rating the maglock door was and, like, how hard it's going to be to get it open. See, it just says maglocked door. It looks like skeleton key 5 plus, so I'm guessing I'm going to need to have five electronics to get in there. What it's probably testing is it's probably testing my intelligence and my electronics. I think I have five intelligence... And I think I have three electronics, which means that I have eight dice and you succeed on a five or a six. And so it's hard to say, but I'm probably going to need a lot more dice to consistently knock out a five plus. A maglock five is a pretty intense maglock, uh, which is one of the reasons why I said there's balance issues with this game. These low level corporations should not have like maglock rating sixes on their doors. Uh, maglock rating sixes are for like the top floors of like Mitsuhama buildings and stuff. Uh, these would probably be like rating one or like rating two in all honesty and so like the entire game you, they need to go through it and like rebalance it for the level your character is at when you get to that point in the game hopefully we don't get betrayed dude if i get betrayed i don't know if i have the firepower to make it happen all right we're out of here a successful run i mean i would treat this run as a complete and abject failure if i was playing tabletop <laughs> there was a lot of shooting. If a gun goes off during a shadow run in tabletop, that means something has gone really, 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 really wrong. And there are very likely going to be extreme consequences. Oh, dude, we're getting shook down again. Nope, don't like that. Can I get another runner over here to help out with this? Clockwork. You want to make a fast buck? Get over here. Here you go. 
Oh, he didn't betray me, dude. I gave that money to him for no reason. Maybe it was the force multiplier. Maybe he saw me show up with backup and like drones and like a heavily armed combat samurai and was like, eh, I was gonna grease this guy, but maybe not. Job's done. So there's our 2,500 new yen, three karma. I gotta pay everybody involved with the job. So that's why you're gonna see numbers tick up up there. But yeah, it's probably gonna come out to about 400 off the top. Yeah, 400, 500 off the top. Still not terrible. I mean, I'm working my way towards upgrades. I've got 12,000 new yen now, which is nice. I don't remember what level my electronics was either. I need to upgrade some stuff. Did I have pay data on board? I don't know if I had pay data. I can drop that off with a fixer too. I don't think I did have pay data because I think I got greased by the black ice right after I picked it up. So anyways, this is Shadowrun Unlimited. I think it's cool. Definitely don't. I mean, if you already own Dragonfall, it's free. You can just go download it from the Steam Workshop. But just be forewarned, there's not a lot of mission variety. Uh, there's no randomization, so the buildings are the same every time you go there to fight. There will be bugs galore all over the place, but the developer needs help with bug reporting. He's also got a thing on his GitHub where if somebody wants to help with the mod, like he's openly asked for help over there over the years. And so maybe you guys can help him sort it out. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile of find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day. Today we're taking a look at Shadowrun Unlimited, which is exactly the kind of Shadowrun game that I've always wanted, despite the fact that it's buggy and it's wonky and it's unbalanced and it has a lot of rough edges on it. Uh, this is exactly the Shadowrun game that I always wanted, and so that's kind of powering me through right now with my 8 to 10 hours that I've played so far. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for hanging out, and that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.